Shostakovich, uh, as selected by my guest Adam Curtis. Uh, we'll have to start winding things up now, but let's get to let's have a big finish. So we're talking about you know uh, the way that in a way, in a way this thing of people being connected. Uh, we thought that was going to bring us a, glo- a, a secure and stable global system. It didn't quite work in the financial sector. But maybe there is an argument that in other sectors, such as the cultural music kind of areas, you know, you're know, you forever getting people saying, oh, you know, when's the next punk going to happen? When's the next uh, rave thing going to happen? And uh, in some ways, uh, you know, music has kind of slowed down in that way that it, there aren't m- new movements and things. So maybe it has worked. Well, I mean, <clears throat> it depends whether you like being a librarian. I mean... Love it. If you spend your time... Co- I mean, the thing about music today, a lot of it is about reorganising the past. Mm. Going back, plundering, which this technology allows you to do brilliantly. Plundering it, reworking it. It's a bit like people who spend their evenings on Flickr, you know, naming their photographs. There's a sort of, there's a sort of managerialism to culture of our time from people who want to preserve it, people who want to go back and research it, people who want to then rework it. And there is a sense that in the culture of our time... I mean, this is not what I've done and gone into my films, but I do think it is a reflection of that sort of systems way of thinking, that culture is a bit like a terminus now in a railway station. Endlessly, railway trains from the past keep on coming in with stuff from the past, which Mm. we then rework, and we're stuck with that. We're not moving forward. I mean, it could be a reflection, not of the technology, but of just the fact we've run out of ideas. I mean, I think, you know, empires in decline tend to run out of ideas. And maybe, you know, we had a little Philip for 20 years, but we hadn't got anything to say now. And Surely so we just, not. Surely well, not. no, I'm, I'm, I'm just hypothesising. <laughs> it could be, yeah. Well, where's the next movement going to come from? I don't know. Well, this is the thing that uh, we were talking a little bit whilst that music was playing, saying that that's one of the kind of paradoxes of our time, that in a way... You surround. You feel like you're surrounded by so much information, and can you keep up? And can you keep abreast of everything? I've got to check my Twitter. I've got to check who was wanting to get in touch with me on Facebook. Not that I do either of those things, but I know they exist. And and uh, and and yet the the other thing, like you're saying, uh, things seem more static than they've ever been in the past. So, you, on the one hand, you're kind of running as fast as you can to keep up, but then nothing's changing. We're on a treadmill. There's also another thing to it, which, I mean, I'm, I'm as guilty of it as, as anyone. There's a knowingness about the past, that this, that this ability to, to, to have the past there, whether it be film or music or anything, there's a knowingness. I mean, you must meet this yourself. People reference things all the time. You hear people coming out of movies going, well, that reference is that, that reference is that, and they're talking about films from, I don't know, 40 years ago? Mm. It's, it's a sort of... There's a knowing desire to return to the past. Now... That could be that we're just in a very conservative age because we've been through a great period of change, both in the 20th century with all sorts of revolutions and with all sorts of social class breakthroughs, in, in, which is really good mm. in, in this country. And now everyone wants it just to settle down and be conservative. Maybe a bit like the French of the 1830s, a time of, you know, everything was very quiet, everything was very hypocritical, but it was all very quiet mm. and held conservative. Maybe we're in one of those periods... Or maybe we're in a period of incredible luck that actually there isn't anything really seriously threatening our society at the moment. We can allow computers to organise and reorganise ourselves in beautiful ways, relative prosperity, relative peace, but it isn't going to last and there isn't a vision of what might happen next, which I think leads to the third thing I was going to mention that comes out of this is a sense of pessimism and a sense of fear of the future. Because if you're stuck always trying to organise the present and hold it stable, whether it be nature, whether it be the economy, whether it be the World Wide Web or your photographs on Flickr, whether you're trying to hold it all stable, you fear the future. You fear that things might suddenly disorganise. You get trapped by an organising principle in your mind. And I think that's limiting. And I think it stops people imagining a better future. And, you know, you live in a period where increasingly power is concentrated amongst smaller and smaller and smaller groups of individuals, less and less real democracy. I mean, there's lots of populist democracy on the web, and it's wonderful, but real democratic challenging of those in power. Whether, in fact, actually, that's the problem, is that it actually limits you. It's not bad and in some ways it's wondrous like that game of pong but it's just static 
and it's somewhat limiting, and we all become managers. Well, we could talk about this all day. We didn't get on to that thing, really, that, yeah, in, in some ways, and this is something that comes up in the programme, that in some ways uh, countries aren't really run by uh, the elected government. It's more by, uh, like I say, it, it, the power gets into the hands of a very small number of people. Basically, uh, it, it's the financial uh, people and... and, and uh, multinational corporations, etc. We can't go there at the moment. All I can say is watch the programme uh, tomorrow night on BBC Two, all watched over by Machines of Love and Grace. It's on. It's a three-part series, isn't it? Yeah. Running uh, uh, for the next three weeks. Thank you very much for coming in today, Adam. And uh, uh, this is my idea of an appropriate uh, record to play after that. I 